Welcome to Lecture 2, The Body's Levels of Organization. The first idea we want to look at are properties common to all organisms. Number one, they all exhibit complex organization and order. That is, they are all arranged in such a way that they can carry out everyday functions. Second one is they all engage in metabolism. Now, metabolism is the sum of all chemical re reactions that occur within the body. It is composed of anabolism and catabolism. Anabolism is using small molecules, joining them together to form larger ones. Catabolism is taking large molecules, breaking them down into smaller ones that usually releases energy for the body to use. Another characteristic is that they all grow and develop. Now, notice that growth and development are two different things. An example would be a child will grow from birth until puberty. They are simply increasing in size, whereas development is taking and increasing in specialization. That child will go through puberty and specialize and develop their reproductive structures. Another one is that all exhibit responsiveness. They can sense and react to stimuli. Example would be if you would place your hand on a burner, it would cause you to withdraw your hand from that burner. Now, this stimuli can be external to the body. It can also be internal, such as a increase or decrease in blood pressure. They exhibit regulation. The organism will adjust their bodily functions to those environmental changes. Now, this exhibits the idea of homeostasis. Homeostasis is a very important idea in all organisms, whether it be plant or animal or bacteria. It is simply that the organism has the ability to detect stimuli and then react to those stimuli in order to maintain a steady state. For example, for the blood pressure, if your blood pressure went up, your body could do things like vasodilate or dilate arteries to help decrease blood pressure to keep it within its optimum range. Another one is they all reproduce. They produce new cells for growth, maintenance, and repair along with sex cells, which will later develop into new organisms. When you look at these organisms, they will often have the same levels of organization. For example, a human and a pig have the same levels of organization from chemical to organismal. Some organisms, such as bacteria, won't get to the tissue level, but they do exhibit the first two, the chemical and the cellular level. So let's take a look at each of these and see what they are. The chemical level is involving atoms and molecules. All of these are included in the chemical level. Atoms, which are the smallest units of matter. Then you have molecules, which are one or more combined atoms. Then you have macromolecules, which are simply big molecules, such as the organic macromolecules, proteins, or nucleic acids, the example being DNA. The third in the chemical level is organelles. Notice the word organ at the beginning of organelles. I use the analogy that the organelles perform a lot of the same kinds of things that the organs do in humans. They are microscopic subunits in cells composed of macromolecules that will carry out some function. The cellular level consists of cells which are the smallest living structures considered to be alive. They will vary widely in structure and they will reflect specializations depending on where they are and what they do. Example, a skeletal muscle cell is long whereas a red blood cell is small and flattened. Again, structure determines function and function helps to determine structure. The cell is formed from the atoms and molecules from the chemical level. The tissue level consists of tissues which are groups of cells that perform the same 
functions. There are four types of tissues that we can look at within the body. They are the epithelial tissue, which covers exposed surfaces and is used for lining body cavities. The connective tissue, which protects, supports, and binds structures and organs together. We have the muscle tissue, which produces movement, and the nervous tissue, which conducts nerve impulses. We have the organ level, which consists of organs. Now, in an organ, you have two or more tissue types performing some specific function. Example, the small intestine is composed of all four tissue types, the epithelial, connective, muscular, and nervous, and they all work together to process and absorb digested nutrients. The organ system level is where you take all of the organs working together to perform a common function or set of functions. Example, we use the small intestine for the organ. Well, if you look at all of the intestines, you have the digestive system, and it will all work together to digest food, absorb the nutrients, and expel the waste products. Finally, we have the organismal level, which is the highest level of structural organization, where all bodily functions are working interdependently, all of the organ systems, in an organism. That is giving you the living being. Finally, we have a figure showing the different levels of organization that you would have for an organism, let's say a human. What you need to be able to do is to take these and give examples for each so that you can build from the simple to the most complex. Let's take a look at the first one, which is an atom. Let's pick nitrogen. We can combine it with other atoms to form a molecule such as NH2. They will work together to build DNA. DNA will help code, or it holds the genetic information to make the Golgi apparatus. The Golgi apparatus will function within the cells to help make and package macromolecules. The cells you can find within the tissues themselves such as epithelial tissue and connective tissue. Then you have the organ, in this case the small intestine, that is doing its specific job within the digestive system which is to break down and absorb nutrients. Then you have all of the organs working together to perform a very unique function to break down, absorb, and eliminate waste. When all of these systems are working together, you get the organism, which is you.